All right, Danny in the building. Yes, sir. (laughs) Danny, listen, let let me just start off by saying I don't have nothing against Variant. I used to work for U.S. Express (laughs) back in the day. Uh I I used to drive for U.S. Express for about two years before I actually left them. I started off with U.S. Express. I got my experience with U.S. Express, so... Shout out to U.S. Express. I don't have nothing against Variant, all right? Nothing at all. A young lady by the name of Dowface, she became, like, real super-duper popular with, uh, with Variant and everything. So here's my thing. Being that, I, that I'm a podcast host, and I've been that for several years, I talk to several drivers and several former drivers of Variant, okay? So those guys are the ones that's keeping me in tune with what's going on with Variant, okay? So Mm -hmm. when they see guys like, like yourself promoting Variant, Dialface, promoting variant heavy and saying things like you can make a hundred K with variant. A lot of guys get in their feelings about that because that's not the actual case. And they feel that you guys are selling wolf tickets, selling dreams and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, when me and you start to talk, I didn't want you to think that was me coming at you, you know, for you promoting Variant and everything. Because I used to promote my old company, JNR Shrugal. I used to put them on the map, made a lot of money with them by doing that. But, uh, but of course, I don't promote my company now because I feel I should get paid for promoting the company. And I paid not by referrals. I'm talking about actually getting paid by doing so. Right. So I didn't want you to think that, oh, you're trolling me and all like that. No, I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that there's a bunch of guys that comes to me and just be like, yo, lockout. Yo, I, I used to work for Variant and that never happened to me. And this, that, and the third, and they're mm-hmm. selling wolf tickets and stuff like that. So I didn't want you to think that, that was coming from me directly. But uh, but let's let's get into it right quick. Danny, how long have you been driving and what you was doing prior uh, to driving? So on paper, I've got about a year and a half of experience. Mm-hmm. I've been around this business for quite a long time, though. Before this, I was a bartender and a server. Okay. Lost both my jobs within three days of each other, and decided I was going to go be a truck driver. Wait, you um, say you lost both of so your? You say you lost both of your jobs? Was it because of the pandemic? Yep. Yeah. Was your was the bar that you was working at? Were they able to bounce back after the pandemic, or did they took a loss just like everybody else? Well, the bar that I worked at it was a cool estate house, so it's a pretty high end, for lack of a better term, chain. It's not quite a chain, but they didn't. Every business experienced some loss, but compared to a mom and pop, they didn't really experience quite as badly as others. But yeah, that being said, I decided to go be a trucker because uh, everybody always needs it. My uncle's been trying to get me to do it since the day I turned 18. And here we are. I'm here finally doing are. something that I really love. All right. So did you uh, did you go to truck driving school or you went through a trucking company to acquire your license? Oh, I went to a school. And not to knock the companies out there, but I went to an eight-week school that was taught by a guy who had 56 years of experience in the business. It was an eight-week-long course. Seven of those eight weeks were spent on backing. 
today's comment shout out goes out to Cody Coleman. He says, I hear my boy Tom from Luther talking. Great job, Tom. Luther is not a bad company. Shit happens. Cody, thank you very much for the comment. I really do appreciate it. This guy went through everything. A lot of the big box companies, when you go through them, you are in class for, I think, three weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. Then you go out with a trainer. And they don't really teach you what you need to know out here. True. True. So, yeah, I, I, I do I agree with you. I'm a big proponent of going through a truck driving school, truck driving academy, college academy. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel that you get a little bit more one on one. You get a much more feel of comfortability with the instructor that's able to to teach you the intricate parts of the truck, as well as you say, backing up, which is a huge issue with a lot of new drivers because when they go through like the sponsored schools, they just get rushed through and then they just get thrown mm -hmm. out to the wolves. And then when you get to a place that's like a tight, like tight as a baby's bottom, you're like, how? How, Sway? How? And then you call up your fleet manager and you let them know Hey, I'm a new driver. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. And then they sitting there telling you, oh, you got to get in. You can do it and all like that. So I'm a big proponent of going through a school to get your license properly. All right. So after that, yeah. after, after getting your license and everything, you was Variant was your first company or was there a company before you got with Variant? You know, I didn't start with Variant. They actually weren't even my second option. They were my third. Mm. I was extremely weary about coming over to Variant because they are associated with US Express. Okay. And, okay, as I was saying, not to knock US Express or anything, but they are not the company. Uh, and if I was just starting out, then yeah, I, I could see going with them. But Variant is. They really are a lot different than U.S. Express. Namely, our trucks, to begin with, are much nicer. We're all solo drivers, and we only do OTR, which is perfect for me. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. But with that being said, we get a rider and a pet policy from day one. But you so didn't. You can but, bring whoever you want with you. But you didn't start with Variant. What was the company that you started with before you got with Variant? Oh, I'd rather not name names. Oh, okay. Okay. It, yeah. Was it good or bad? It was a horrible. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it, yeah. I'm not going to drag any company's name through the mud because right. I know some people right now who are working for them, and I'm not going to it, do it that. Just, but, it, it just wasn't a good. It, it just wasn't a good experience, and you, of course, not going back. I'm assuming. No, I will not go back. <laughs> okay. So with that said, from that bad experience, what made you, well, you said that you didn't put Variant as your number one pick. So what was your number no. one, what was your number one pick and why did you end up going with Variant? Actually, I didn't have a number one pick. So it was more of just me weighing my options. Mm -hmm. When I decided to go with Variant, it was after about two months to two months of deliberation and just hearing so much good about the company, knowing that they were associated with US Espresso. And that was kind of my mm, contingency point because I know several, I have several friends who have worked for US Express, did not have good experience. Now, Variant, on the other hand, they have truthfully re-engineered trucking. And I know a lot of people, you're going to get good and bad with anything, especially when this truck grew or this company grew from four trucks about three and a half years ago to now 18, over 1,800 trucks. Yeah, 
course, there's going to be, you can't make everybody happy. Of course. However, this is one of those companies that you can absolutely make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. The thing that people get hung up on is they don't realize that in order to do that, you've got to actually put the work in. You've got to put the effort in. You can't just drive a truck around for a company and expect recruits to come up to you and fall into your lap. That's not how it works. You've got to get out there. You've got to talk to everybody. You've got to force lead. It, it's basically like another job. Me, I did real estate for quite a long time my mom's actually a broker so this for me is like second nature it's very easy for a lot of people it's not that easy okay so, so yeah it's not wolf tickets it's more of you get what you put, you get out of it what you put into it okay so danny like i said me i uh, i know about i know about i did the grind i did the work i got out there but mainly majority of my referrals really came from my social media so with that said mm -hmm. with that said because like you said it is easy and of course dow face shoulder element and really did show the fact that she did cover that amount within a year's time that she was with with variant but as as i mm -hmm. said as i said and as others said all and you just got finished saying that all that wasn't from driving so the thing yeah. the thing is like well some people say like a former variant employee told me that it was a lot of sitting they wanted them to they wanted them to get into the ambassador program so that it could offset the sitting they want them to go and make a social media platform and try to get, try to get other drivers to come in up under you so you can make money off the other drivers and stuff like that. And they told me that they wasn't interested in doing all that. They was only interested in driving. But the problem with that, right. the problem with that was, again, it was a lot of sitting. It was a lot of tracking down of the trailers. It was it was the zone or the Qualcomm system or whatever system that you guys got the to, to get the loads wasn't coming in. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, they was only interested in driving. They didn't come in to sell the company. What do you got to say about that? Or what's your opinion on that? Okay, so here's the thing. When it comes to sitting, I do not care what company you work for, but the way that freight is, especially this year, we're at a national, we're down 35% on freight all across the board. It doesn't matter what company you work for. So yeah, you're going to have some time where you're going to be sitting. As far as trailer hunting goes, honestly, I don't get why people complain about that. You get paid the exact same amount to go and look for a trailer as you do to pull a loaded trailer or an empty trailer. It doesn't make a lick of difference. You're still getting paid. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Mm. Now, when it comes to our computer system, we actually run a brand new computer system that they rolled out last year. It's called Platform Science. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of companies are using it. It's kind of similar to PeopleNet, but it does a little bit more. We have integrated something called the optimizer. And this optimizer is a computer system. It figures out how you run, how you like to run. So like how many hours a day, what speed you run at, et cetera, et cetera. It figures out what area you're in and pulls the best rate for you and how many hours you have left on your clock. And it bases everything off of that. Now, this company is extremely cognizant of home size to the point where Almost every single time I go home, I'm there a day or two early. Okay. So this optimizer was not recognizing home time. We are currently giving it basically a facelift so that it recognizes home time and doesn't send drivers in the wrong direction. Right. Now, here's the other piece to that. Drivers getting sent in the wrong direction, knowing that they have home time coming up, 
taking the load anyways and then calling and complaining about it, mm. that's, that's on you. You close mouth don't get fed. You have to call in and tell them, hey, I'm not going to make it home on time. Can we do something about this? And it would have been fixed. Mm-hmm. I've had it happen to me where I had to call in. I'm like, look, going in the opposite direction. Can we fix this? So this company, I understand what people say about it. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you work for. You're going to have the exact same problem. The difference over here is we actually have town hall meetings. We have a big company-wide town hall meeting. Uh, we're divided up into pods of about 250 drivers apiece. We have our pod town hall meeting. And as an ambassador, we have ambassador town hall meeting. And they actually do take what we say to heart. And they have made improvements on it. The trailer situation is getting better and better every day. They have literally brought in a woman to pretty much just figure out where all of our trailers are, how long they've been sitting, start charging customers for not unloading our freight fast enough. So we're not having the issues that we did say two, three months ago. Okay. Okay. We actually do improve over time. Okay. 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 That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So Danny, you've been around this my whole life. So <laughs> you're a TikToker. You how long have you been on TikTok? About two months. About two months? All right. So you just relatively yes. got started on TikTok. There was a former driver. She's a TikToker. Are you familiar with, with who I'm about to talk about? I don't believe so. All right. So Honestly, she- I'm not very well versed in TikTok. I have a friend of mine who manages my social media for me because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to that. He tells okay. me what to do. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. So the young lady goes by the name of Gear Grinding Hyena, and she was she's was a former variant driver. She came over, drove for the company, and she kind of ran into some huge roadblocks over there. And of course, she made a couple of TikToks along the way about the company, one of which was the truck that she was assigned to. Uh, the truck that she was assigned to wasn't in the best kind of condition. And she mentioned the fact that it was bug infected. You did mention the fact that the trucks are newer over there. The people, the drivers that comes in that drives for the company, are they actually in rehash trucks or are they actually put in newer trucks that's, you know, that's, that nobody has been in. So that largely depends on what area you're in, where they send you to pick up the truck and what they have available. Our truck, I'm in a 2022 Freightliner Cascadia on deck. It had 24,000 miles on it when I got it last year in November. Mm -hmm. So there was another driver in it before me. I definitely did not have that experience and i don't know of anybody else over here who has had that experience i'm vaguely familiar with who you're talking about Mm -hmm. um from what i have seen i have seen that particular person go through quite a few companies the thing is at the end of the day i've never heard of anyone having a bug infested truck but so i i can't speak to that but I can tell you when I got in my truck, it was the absolute nicest truck that I have been in to date. They did everything. They lifted up the floor mat that goes on top of the subfloor for the semi. They lifted that up and got the dirt out from underneath there. They put plastic over the seat. They had a brand new mattress in there for me. I don't know why she had that issue, but that sounds I've never heard of anyone having that type of issue. Every yeah, single I, person that I know that comes over here loves their truck. I, and typically we're putting new drivers in anywhere from a 2021 to a 2023. I, I would think 
maybe U.S. Express, because some of you, because when I started with U.S. Express, luckily for me, the first truck I was in was kind of garbage, but they did put me in at the time, 2019, 2018. I know it was a, I know it was a new truck. It was a brand new truck. They put me in a, a T680. And no, I haven't had any issues with, with, with the trucks or anything like that, but I have come to know of some U.S. Express trucks being I, <laughs> not all that hot. <laughs> but yeah, with, with, and with, that's with, the U.S. Express side of things. We do things a lot differently over here. We have ECUs in our trucks. They do not. We have 3,000 watt inverters. They do not. Mm -hmm. We have condo sleepers for a solo driver. A lot of their drivers team or are in a sense sometimes people I know of being forced to team. Variant really is different. And I hate saying that because I feel like everybody says that about everything. I want to be talking to you if I didn't like this company. If I didn't like this company, and I'd still drive for them because they're literally paying for me to get my master's degree right now. Okay. okay. So they do more than I think any trucking company. There are companies out there that have a uh, full program for them. A lot of the times so though, you have to pay a percentage. They are, I have a full ride right now and I'll have a master's degree next year. Awesome. 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 Okay. So what's the, for you, Danny, with trucking in general and being with Variant, of course you, you like Variant, you're comfortable with Variant. What's your end game oh, yeah. with Variant? What, are you going to go ahead and try to ride it out and retire or whatever the case? But what's the end game with Variant? What are you trying to get out of being with Variant? To be quite honest with you, I really don't have an end game. I don't have an end game for anything. I have done a lot of different things for somebody my age, and I love what I'm doing now. I love trucking. I love the company that I'm with. I very much enjoy being with Variant, and I'm going to stay with them as long as I can. I'm going to ride that truck that they gave me until the doors fall off. If they <laughs> let me, but. <laughs> I don't really have a specific goal. And I told you they're paying for my degree. I don't intend to use that degree. I was just bored and I miss being in school and writing papers. And I will probably get another degree on them when I'm done with this. This is just something I feel like I have found like a home. Um, I'm not going to, say that they're like family because they're not at the end of the day it's a job and i can't stand it when people try to say they treat you like family that's yeah. an automatic red flag yeah exactly they exactly. don't treat you like family but they treat you with respect which that's is be that's the best way not to sum very it up. Common. they absolutely they care about you as a driver as a person if you call them and say hey I really don't feel good. They are on the phone with you saying, what can we do for you? What do you need? Do we need to repower your load? Do you need to go to the hospital? What do you need? And not very many other companies are doing that. A lot are just, oh, can you just get the load there and then we'll take care of you? And then the next thing you know, you have another load and you're just working through being sick as a dog. Over here, they don't do that. All right. All right. Danny, thank you very much for coming on to the show, man, <laughs> and chopping it up with me. I, Thanks I, for having me. No doubt. It's like I told you in your comment session and in your text. Like, yeah, we when we come together, we'll chop it up. I, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> like I said, it's not me. It's not me coming over here and be like, yeah, this company, this, that, and the third, because I, I, I honestly don't. I, 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 I honestly don't care about the company. You know what I'm saying? I used to work for U.S. Express. Right. Shout out to U.S. Express. I know that variant is 
a variant of U.S. Express. And it's just that a whole bunch of my subscribers and my followers and former drivers, they come and they watch, they, they watch the social media influencers such as yourself trying to pawn this company off as the best thing ever. <laughs> and they like, no, are you going to have, you're going to have drivers like that. Are you going to have drivers that didn't have no good experience? Yeah. And then you got drivers such as yourself and it's such as yourself and Dowface that got an awesome experience. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's, and that's it's what not I for tell everybody. When I talk to them. It's, exactly. It, you, there is no one trucking company out there that fits every single person. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you go, whether you're an owner operator, a lease operator, a company driver, even if you work in dispatch in the office, Every single company is going to be different mm -hmm. and it's life. You are going to have to decide does the good way out the bad for you? Mm -hmm. Does it work for you? If it doesn't work for you, that's fine. And that's what I tell people. If, it's, if we're not for you, that's understandable. But this company is absolutely for me. Exactly. Exactly. Danny, thank you very much for coming on and sharing your story and everything. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Y'all know the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Man podcast show. If you guys want to jump on with me, y'all know the number 216-600-2090. Come on and chop it up with the Lockout Man like my girl Danny here from Variant which I don't believe she's going to leave anytime soon. So, Danny, <laughs> go ahead and uh, shout out your credentials so that if anybody sees this and they're interested in Variant and want to use you as a reference, how would they go about to do that? Today's comment shout out goes out to Cody Coleman. He says, I hear my boy Tom from Luther talking great job tom luther is not a bad company shit happens cody thank you very much for the comment i really do appreciate it yeah absolutely so they can follow me on social media at trucking with danny and i also have an ambassador link it is ambassador I'm trying to find it take your time there we are Roger dot drive variant dot my name Danielle Calderero and that is D-A-S-A-R-O. Right. But if you can't figure that one out, I got my TikTok and my link is on every single one of my videos. All right, all right, guys, make sure you follow her on TikTok. And if you're interested in getting with variant, make sure you guys use her use her driver link and she can she can definitely use use the referral. Use the yeah, use the referral. On that note, everybody, thank you for watching. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate you guys. That's going to do it for us. Y'all take it easy, and we're out.